Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Lord God, we just come to you tonight and we ask you, Lord, just to meet us where we are, Father God. Meet each person that comes onto this broadcast exactly where they are and your great mercy and your grace and your love for us, Lord. I pray that you would take each one of us into that next level of glory, into the heavenly realm, Lord God. Help us to see that we are seated with Christ in heavenly places. Lord, help us to be found in Christ. Help us to understand that you have made us righteous in Christ, Lord. And God, I pray that anybody that is going through something that feels pitiful, that, that, that feels hard, where they feel like they are stuck in a pit, where they have got spiritual warfare going on. Um, Lord, there, there's painful things that we sometimes have to walk through in life. And Lord, I pray that as we get into the word tonight, that you would just illuminate to your people the path that you have laid out in your word for us to understand your methods and understand your character and understand how you often do things and what you require of us and what it takes to to come through these things unscathed and better and victorious lord and i thank you god that you have given us your word as a lamp to our feet and a light to our path lord i pray that you would anoint my my words tonight that you would just use me as a vessel god may help me to speak only the things that you would have me speak in jesus name in the name of jesus okay so I'm going to be talking about uh, the lives of a few people. You guys let me know where you're watching from um, in, in the Word of God. Specifically, I want to be talking about Joseph quite a bit. Not the, not the father of Jesus, but um, Joseph who was taken uh, with the coat of many colors, who had brothers that were jealous of him, and they sold him to, as a slave. Um, so Joseph had had brothers that were jealous of him because they were born of a different mother and his father loved his mother and so he was the youngest and he just had a special love for him and he gave him this coat of it's called the coat of many colors I know you, most of you probably all of you have heard this story and so his brothers were jealous and so I just want to um, I want you guys to take some notes if you're able because uh, there's some things that I want you to go and read over the next couple of weeks while I'm talking about this because this is going to be so helpful. This is so powerful from the Word of God to help you go through, hey, from Texas, whatever it is that the Lord is calling you to go through, victorious. And so, um, Lord, I should say, help me, Jesus. Help me, Jesus. Help me, Jesus. So I'm going to actually skip over the first thing I have and go straight into, uh, I'm going to be going over some of the things that we have to learn, some of the trials, some of the tests that we have to go through in order to get into that place of authority and abundance where we are walking in the promises of God, where he has given us influence, where he has uh, um, you know, just walked us through the character building process to where he can really trust us to have influence in the kingdom and for his kingdom. Now, in every phase, no matter where you are in life, no matter where you are in your walk, God is going to use you where you are. Praise the Lord. He uses broken people. He uses imperfect people. But, you know, a lot of Christians roam around in the desert or stay in prison their entire life spiritually speaking and don't ever walk into the abundance of all that God has for them because they don't learn their lessons they don't allow the Lord to build their character to handle the call on their lives because we all have calls on our lives and we are all mantled for greatness and we are all mantled for leadership even you might not be called to lead people but you're called to to lead in a certain uh, arena in life whether it's um people or an industry or your family god has called all of his people into leadership because we are to be like christ and christ led people we are to make disciples and in order to make disciples you have to have followers and people aren't going to follow you you know that well they may follow you but you're they're not you're not going to lead people into a good place if you're not following the plan that god has set out in order to be a person 
uh, after his own heart, a person of excellence that he uh, elevates. And we can elevate ourselves, you guys. You know that. You might have a call on your life, but um, God's got to be the one to put you if you're going to stay there without having some destructive stuff happen. Jesus, Jesus. So we're going to talk about Joseph for a minute. Let's see. You know, I thought I have like a bunch, a bunch of points, but I'm going to park at one point tonight because I think it's enough. If you want to read the story of Joseph, read Genesis 37 through 47. It's 10 chapters. Reread it. We've all heard it, but reread it because it's a really good story. And the first thing I want to talk about, and it's going to take up the whole evening, and y'all don't go away because this is so important, and we can all grow in this area. This is not something, this is not one of those messages where you can go, oh, I've got this, I don't need this, I'm good in this area. It's humility because if we are not humble, God opposes us. Um, the, the word says in James 4.10, humble yourself in the sight of the Lord, and he will lift you up. So, Humility is huge. It's huge. It's huge. It's huge. And there is such a spirit of pride and rebellion that is unleashed in this world right now, which causes a ton of offense. Um, it just, it causes anarchy and it is against everything that God is because God is a God of order and he is a God of authority and he sets up every authority on earth and we are to respect authority we are to respect the authorities that he has placed over us and we are to learn submission submission and, and humility are kind of like you can't truly submit you can submit and do what somebody's telling you to do without a humble heart but the kind of submission that god is calling us to is is through humility and um so i want to just talk about this for a minute because until we learn humility we're going to have to repeat some of the same lessons over and over again. And I'm going to like talk about some of the, the stories in the Bible of what people had to go through. Because it's, it's good to read what they went through and think, hey, we're not the only ones that have to learn this. It's every everybody. Um, so David, you guys know David. He was a shepherd boy. He was anointed to be king. And Saul was king during, during that time. And Saul... Um, David killed Goliath when he was still a shepherd boy with some stones and a sling. And, and Saul recognized this is a brave guy. And, and um, he was anointed to be king far years before he ever became king. Years before he ever became king. So many of us have a call and an anointing and even a mantle that God has placed on us to do great and mighty things. And... You can have that on you, and if you don't have humility to go from where you are to where God wants you to be, you are going to become manipulative, you are going to become bitter, you are going to become uh, hard to get along with. I mean, all these things, if pride is there, then it doesn't matter if you do get into the position, just like Saul, because he had pride and he didn't fully obey the Lord and he wasn't humble. And, you know, he had some moments of humility in his life, but, you know, David waited for him. He waited for him. He waited for him. He waited for him. He wasn't about to touch God's anointed. And he actually, um, you know, would hide from Saul because Saul would get jealous of him. You know, he would, he would see the, the call on his life and he used him in his army because God was with him and God would bless his military exploits. And, and really when he started to get jealous of David is when they came in from war and, and some women were singing a song that said, uh, you know, Saul has killed his thousands and David his ten thousands. And Saul got jealous in his heart and an evil spirit came on him and he tried to kill David several times. And David had an opportunity to kill him and take him out and he had supporters and he didn't. And this is humility. This is humility. You might be at a job, and I've had jobs, where you might be more fit to, to manage than your boss. And you have people in authority over you who you know aren't doing as good as you could do. It might be a spouse that isn't as far along. Like if you were married to a man who, who you know you know more than him about certain things. We 
we a lot of times want to make excuses for our reasons for, for being prideful and not humbling ourselves in a situation. Like there's no excuse for it. We have to walk in humility and wait on God to place us and wait on God to move and humble ourselves under his mighty hand. And part of humility is waiting on the timing of God, waiting on God's timing. A lot of people step out, they have a mantle, they have a call, they have an anointing, they have knowledge, they have wisdom, they have charisma, and they, they go push and they make it happen, and then they fall. They fall down the road. They don't have that character built up to handle the place that they have pushed their way into. And so a humble person waits on God's timing on things. If you are prideful, you think, why should I have to wait? If you're humble, you think, I probably have some other things I need to learn before God releases that to me. And so I'm just going to humble myself and say, Lord, what else do I need to learn? I need to grow some more apparently or you would have, you know, this would have happened by now. And it's a humbling thing to come to that place to know God promised you this thing, but he hasn't released it and you're trusting him. And a humble person, because they're humbling themselves under God's hand, trusting in God's sovereignty, they have joy. They have joy because they have a thankful heart because they don't think they're not getting like i'm not getting what i deserve i'm anointed for king why is he still the king he has an evil spirit come on him he tried to kill me you know i should take him out i mean david was so serious about honoring god and honoring god's anointed and honoring god's timing that saul ended up killing himself in battle because they, they were coming and he didn't want to be killed by the other army so he fell on his own sword and, and uh, somebody came to David I can't think of his name right now you guys can read this in the scriptures it's a good story and said thinking they were going to win favor with David that they were the ones to help you know run Saul through and he killed that man he said who are you to touch the Lord's anointed Lord, and, and, and this is why David was called a man after God's own heart. He humbly waited before God. He humbly waited. He, uh, David learned humility by waiting on God's timing to be elevated in the kingship he was anointed for. It's a humbling thing to wait for somebody to change and not try to force change on them yourself. It's a humbling, it's a humbling thing to wait on God for your spouse and, and not try to, to make it happen. Or to allow God in his sovereignty to uh, keep you in a job where you're not being, all your gifts aren't being fully utilized. David was playing harp in the palace for the king. And he was anointed to be king by God. That's humility. He was a servant. That's another thing. Um, servanthood. This is something we've got to learn. It, is, it ties in with humility. We've got to learn to serve. We've got to have a servant's heart and serve unto the Lord not to impress others trusting God to bring our reward. I mean, how many of you understand or know or could raise your hand and see like, I've been in this situation where I have served when nobody was seeing and it was a menial job and it was a menial task and nobody ever rewarded me, nobody ever noticed. How many people have had that experience where they did it unto the Lord and the joy that comes through that? It is great joy. Humble people have a lot of joy. Servant-hearted people have a lot of joy. I remember when I first came to the Lord and I was learning these things. I was working as a CNA. And the thing is, a lot of people in the world might misunderstand you if you were humble. They might think that you're weak. And I've had that happen. People assume that because you are humbling yourself, you know, you are humbling yourself. You're submitting to that authority. Somebody might misunderstand you. You, you better believe people are going to misunderstand and think that it is a weakness for you and even take advantage of it. Try to take advantage of it. And, um, you know, I would have nurses and stuff have me go do their job, seeing that I would just do it. Rather than to keep the peace, I would just do it. And it, so much joy in that. So much peace in that. I know I've talked before. I was a CNA for years and years and years and years. And, you know, I'd be working on jobs with a lot of other caregivers. And, and, that, and, you know, they always, any little bit of housework they did, they wanted to write it in the notes and complain about other people. I mean, not all of them, but this was a big year long, year after year, I saw this happening. 
happening over and over again. And the Lord would just say, you just clean eyes unto me. You just do this out on me. And the, the same people who weren't doing the cleaning and were doing all the complaining would complain, complain about me who was doing those things without even writing every little thing I did down and just trusting the Lord. So wherever you are, you serve the Lord humbly as unto him and trust and he is going to elevate you. Don't give up because in due season you will be elevated. I was saying I was talking about, uh, I wanted to talk about Joseph quite a bit because his brother sold him into slavery. Oh my goodness, there was jealousy there because of the favor. You guys, if you have favor on your life, if you are a humble person, prideful people, they might be in position above you, but they are going to be jealous of you because they might not fully comprehend the power and the, and the humble walk, but there's something in them that says, this person has something that I don't have. They have an inner strength that I don't have. And they will try to roll you over and take advantage of you and misunderstand you and use you. And these are anybody who is being prepared by the Lord for something greater. These are things you are going to have to go through. If you haven't already been through it, it's likely going to happen. <laughs> you know, it's just going to happen. People misunderstand. Now, a humble, meek person, that does not mean that they never confront anything. You know, I was telling the story about you know trying to hire a babysitter i've been in super mega spiritual warfare over my child care issue and uh, i have to let the, the other person go there is a serious problem among many employees you cannot correct them like we do not need to be touchy love is not touchy we need to be humble people i mean if you are a christian and you are employed somewhere it is not an attack if your employer critiques or tells you what to do or how to do it. And my goodness, we should not be people who need 18 things said nice about us before we hear any kind of directive from our employer without getting a, a ship on our shoulder or hurt or wounded. And if you're like that, allow the Lord to heal you because that is pride. That is pride. And we can look at the root of pride as you know, lack of understanding the love of God and all that, but we need to get healing so that we can humble ourselves. You know, Joseph, he was put in Potiphar's house. He was a slave, okay? Potiphar ended up trusting him with everything. I can guarantee you he had a humble attitude towards Potiphar because he was a slave. No slave says, well, you didn't tell me how great I was doing before you told me you wanted me to do this differently. Like, you know, I did... Most of what you told me to do, right? You you were just telling me something I need to do differently and like getting all up. No, this was a man with a humble heart. Jesus got on his knees and washed his disciples' feet and says, go and do the same. We can't be touchy. We can't be so prideful that we're, we can't be told what to do. It is a spirit of antichrist in the world, a spirit of rebellion in the world that's rebelling against the authorities and that doesn't understand God sets up boundaries. He sets up authorities. And when you submit to the authority he has placed over you, and until you submit, until we submit, we are not fit to lead other people. Certainly not other people. Because honestly, until we learn to submit, and a lot of parents, sometimes you won't begin to understand how much of an issue you have until you see it in your kids. I know this was my, the case with me. I began to see some um, of the very things reflecting back to me and my son as I was raising him by myself. And the Lord would say, mm-hmm, because I would talk to him. And I'd say, you know, I shouldn't have to explain everything. And this is, you know, just respect my word and do what I've asked you to do. If there needs to be an explanation, you know, I wasn't super stern, like I'm not explaining anything. But there comes a time with your kid, they need to just do what you've asked them to do without, you know, a big explanation. I mean, don't run in the road right now. You need to obey me and trust that I have your best interest in mind. And so as I'm parenting my son, I was learning so much. And I know you parents can attest to this. And if you haven't seen the correlation, I pray the Lord, open your eyes. Open your eyes because there are certain things that your kids aren't going to get free from until you do. And that you might have already raised them and they're out on their own and they're living in the fruit of the rebellion and, and the, 
pride and everything that you had on you while you were raising them. And listen, God will turn that around. You begin to humble yourself and submit to authority, namely to God and whoever he's placed above you on earth. And he will turn around those things. He will break those curses off of your kids. I've watched it happen in my own life. And I believe that. I believe that God will do it. So James 4, 6 says, God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. How many of you are going through something hard that you don't have the grace for it? And how many of you are, or have gone through something hard and the grace was there? This is a key right here. Many of you guys and myself in certain situations... When you find a situation that you know God's having you walk through and you have no grace to be there, no patience, no joy, no peace. Now, there can be other things going on, but we should look at this and say, is there, am I being proud here? Am I not being humble here? Many are lacking the grace to be in difficult places for a season because of their lack of humility, because God gives grace to the humble. There are certain situations, a hard boss, for instance, if every day you're bucking it in your spirit, bucking it, I shouldn't have to deal with this, and I don't, da, 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 and who do they think they are, and I've, da, 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 and I'm this, and I'm that, and I don't deserve this, and I don't deserve that. And this is by no means me saying stay in abusive relationships, but this is overall in places where you know God has you for a season, and he is working in you th through a season. When you humble yourself, and, and, and humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. And no, I'm not humbling myself to this person because they deserve it in and of themselves. But because of the word of God, because what God has spoken to me, I will do it. You know, even Jesus, when he was led, he was led to the cross like a lamb to the slaughter and he opened not his mouth. A humble person knows when to shut their mouth. <laughs> and I'm not saying I'm the perfect example of it all the time, but a humble person knows in order to keep the peace, because somebody who has meekness is, is a peacekeeper. Blessed are the peacekeepers. Let's, let's go to Romans uh, 12, 16. Romans 12, 16. Okay, this might not be the one, but blessed are those who persecute you. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. Okay, live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud. I think it's interesting that those sentences come after, you know, do not be proud comes with living in harmony. It's going to be hard to have harmony if you're full of pride with anybody. Because that pride is going to rise up and not um, have grace for somebody else's weakness. Humility can say, you know, you can see people have weaknesses. I have weaknesses. I'm receiving the grace of God for my weakness. And with the same grace that I've received, I, I'm, I'm giving forth. And us married people, we are joint partakers of the grace of God. So we need to give grace to our spouse in the areas that they are weak and pray for them. And knowing that we too have received that grace, it's sometimes it's just so easy to see what is wrong with that other person and not have grace for it because we think too highly of ourselves, that we don't think we should have to bear with anybody underneath their weaknesses. And we, we forget that people have to bear with us too. And we want that. We want to sow grace into other people's lives, and it takes humility to do that. And when you sow grace into other people's lives, that grace comes back to you from God and from other people. Be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not be conceited. I love, I love that Potiphar made Joseph ruler of his entire house. And when Potiphar's wife grabbed Joseph to try to seduce him. He said, my, my master's made me ruler over everything. He trusts me. I am not about to, to do him wrong like this. And this was a man who was a slave. When you have a servant's heart and you 
work hard where the Lord has put you humbly, he will elevate you. God is watching. When nobody else is watching, God is watching. God is watching. God is watching. God is watching. A humble person is trusting in the justice of God to bring forth the reward. And he will do it. He will raise you up. He will raise you up. He will raise you up. People are going to be jealous. There's a jealousy test. I am going to touch on that a little bit. Actually, let me go to Philippians 2. Paul was also a humble person. You know, I was talking to my husband about this. I'm like, who are some good, what are some good examples of humility um, in the Word of God? And he said Paul. And I was like, that Paul is not the first person who um, comes to my mind. But but then when I got into these verses, I'm like, you know what? He was a humble person. And that's one of the things, the misconceptions about humility that we think a humble person doesn't ever confront is, you know, a lot of people have this idea that a humble person is kind of a mousy person who just lets people walk over them. Like when I was telling the story about hiring a sitter, I'm sorry, I started to tell the story. And the lady comes in and she, you know, starts taking over on day two and saying she's going to take my daughter to out every day and she doesn't see staying in. And I was like, I, as, as an employer or as a spiritual leader or as a parent or as a husband, there are situations where we are not to, we don't have to and it is not it's not unloving it's not wrong it's not ungodly to be an employer that just is straight up and uh, you know no this is not what i've hired you for <laughs> you know somebody made a comment on youtube you should that would have been a great opportunity to share the love of christ with her i'm like no that would have been a great opportunity to explain the situation the way that i did you know i was led by the spirit with that being humble doesn't mean that you never have a bold explanation, that you never bring correction, that you don't, you know, as an employer, you don't tell your employees what is okay and what is not okay. That's not what being humble is. And um, and, and I, I feel like maybe sometimes Christian women have a harder time finding that line and those boundaries of what is humble servanthood and what is getting taken advantage of. The spiritual warfare that I've been under the last couple of weeks is about that very point. You know, because a humble person searches their heart. A, a humble person is willing to see where they're wrong. They're willing to admit when they're wrong. They're willing to come up higher. But for me, and I know for a lot of you ladies, especially, maybe some men have this trouble too, but where is the line between servanthood and humility? And, you know, there have been women who have been stayed in abusive marriages and, and taken all kinds of abuse, believing that that is humbling themselves under the hand of God and, 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 and walking in the kind of servanthood Jesus required, and it's not. And so there's a line there that we got to understand. You know, we got to be led by the Spirit. We got to be led by wisdom. And we got to understand the character of God, that there are certain situations where we have to be long suffering with people, but Jesus loves us too. <laughs> and so there, there are, there's more nuance to this and, and being bold and not allowing uh, yourself to submit to uh, an ungodly situation. Why is there to submit to their husbands as unto the Lord? You know, you don't have to watch pornography. You don't have to deal with you know, him cheating and, you know, abusing you and stuff like that. The Lord wants you to pull back and put up boundaries because that's honoring your temple and that's honoring God to, to love yourself because you can only love your neighbor as you love yourself. But you might have, you know, there might be some attitude there. There might be some hardness there. There might be a lack of tenderness there. There are, there are certain things that we have to bear up under with people for a time. And uh, that's what I'm talking about here. And uh, we got to be led by the Spirit and have wise counselors around us and have some, some people and spiritual authority that we can bounce things off of if we're not sure where this line is. Because I know for me, my spiritual warfare came because, because if, you, if, if you do have, and I'll just put, plug this in here, I wasn't even planning on talking about it, but 
I haven't been on doing his videos as much the last couple of weeks because I've had a lot of spiritual warfare and I've been filling up and filling up and filling up and doing this warfare. And so I'm not going to get on and, you know, unless I'm feeling led to, to encourage people and to pour out if I'm needing to uh, pull, pour, 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 pour in, which I've been doing and doing like this spiritual warfare. And I know that it's because God's bringing me to this new place. And whenever you are in transition, a lot of times there's going to be warfare. And it's the 18th today, and I finally have gotten through it. And I had prophesied around the 16th or the 18th, the metamorphosis process is going to end. And so for a lot of you, the, the season, this last six weeks or so, six to seven weeks of warfare and confusion and things that you've had coming up against you, it's coming to an end prophetically, spiritually speaking, if you've been doing, if you've been obeying, if you've been pressing, that's coming to an end and there is growth that has come. And I got, I just got hit with some witchcraft. It was a Jezebel spirit. I finally just spent, I'm like, I am not getting up from this space, Lord, until you bring more clarity. Now, my husband, who I do respect his input, and he had, he had it down before I did honestly he he understood before I did but I'm I'm not I, people would that have known me long might think I would just cut somebody off like that but I agonize before I cut somebody off I agonize and I search my own heart and I pray and you know I can see why people do what they do and you can do all of that you know and but it even in humility sometimes when somebody is coming at you and they've got demonic forces operating through them and, and it's not your assignment to bring deliverance to that person, but it's, it's a satanic assignment against you to stop you from doing what God's called you to do. You got to cut them off. You got to cut them off. And that's, that's, oh, that's warfare. That is warfare. And when you have that confusion and, uh, I actually thought about this, there, there's such extreme witchcraft and, and control and manipulation that comes against the people of God. If you are prophetic and you are moving forward in the Lord, you may as well know that once you are moving up into the next level, there's always some warfare that comes through before you get a new breakthrough because the enemy knows what God is fixing to release in your life and he is trying to thwart the plan that God has for you. And so as you're going through the pit to the palace, you may as well know there's going to be attacks. There are going to be attacks. And, and Lord, we have to walk humbly before him while we go through that. Because we know in and of ourselves, in our flesh, there's, there's nothing good that dwells in us. And if we do not lean, we got to have the grace of God. And in order to have the grace of God, we got to humble ourselves. Lord, we need your grace. We need your wisdom. We need your guidance, Lord. We need your strength, Lord. We need deliverance. It was so cool. I was up about two hours last night, interceding, interceding, interceding. And I got up this morning, and my cup of water had a spider that was drowned in it. And I really took that as a sign because the spider spirit, I don't think I've read, read written about the spider spirit, but I need to because I talk about it a lot. And I've not seen a lot written on it. It is, it is a web that tries to hold you back. It is a web that tries to control you. And, and the Lord was even as this metamorph, and I'm just going to go start prophesying here. This is kind of off my notes, but this is where God's taken me. And the last six or seven weeks, and I know a lot of you guys are tracking with me about this, have had some warfare, and I watched with my with my daughter a little bit of a Veggie Tales because she only watched about ten minutes of it on my on my phone when I need to do something. And I was watching, and this this Veggie Tales was talking about a spider spirit that was essentially locating somebody's weakness. And then sucking them in to be controlled by their weakness, you know, rinding them up in the web to where they couldn't get free. And listen, some people, some people, your your human affections are your weakness. And really, in this situations that I have been battling, it is my human affection. This I counsel a lot of people. So I am just telling you guys, so many people get held back. Because they misunderstand what God is requiring of them and their human affections towards a wounded person keeps them locked in a place that's unhealthy that they can't move past and they can't move forward because this person's demons 
their manipulation, their control, their playing on your sympathies, you know, and listen, when you're dealing with somebody with a Jezebel spirit, at least the, 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 the people that I was dealing with, the two people that I was dealing with, they are both Christian people that are wounded, that haven't dealt with their wounds, and they will use, uh, they, they will use a lot of spiritual lingo. They'll try to turn things around. They'll try, like, that confusion will come. And it is, I mean, looking back, I'm like, well, duh. You know, once you're out of it and you see clearly and you've gotten past it and you, you know, you come out on the other side. I did, you know, take my husband's counsel. I mean, my husband was like, got mad the other night. And he's like, I want you to block that person. <laughs> make he's just caused you so much upset you know <laughs> and i'm like I'm, I'm trying to weigh um you know does my husband just want to sympathize because my husband loves me he doesn't want to I've, I've had to struggle through things that he would have liked to have seen me come out of sooner you know but that god was having me struggle in so you know i was listening to him and i'm like okay that when he said that he was like you, you gotta like block this thing and, and and the other thing he was letting me feel it out like what do you want to do here <laughs> And I just, I just got with the Lord, just meditated. And he took me into the spirit realm and he gave me the interpretation of some dreams. And he was saying, you know, there's a, a, an Ahab spirit. If you have a tendency towards codependency, if you have curses of codependency in your past, an Ahab spirit will uh, come in and, tr and weaken you against that controlling person, against that manipulative person to, to uh, keep you locked in to doing what they want you to do. So that's just there. That wasn't part of my message. But I'll pray. I'll actually pray for some people because uh, in, on our way to the pit to the palace, there are going to be some spiritual warfare things that we have, we have to address. That's just the way it is. So some of the things about pride. Um, when you are a humble person, you don't have to do something important to be an important person. And you know that because you know that God has anointed you. He has called you, that he is working in you and through you. You can be cleaning the floors and God has an assignment for you that day. You can be cleaning a bathroom stall and God has an assignment for you that day to pray for somebody who comes into the bathroom to do their lipstick. And you are an agent of power on the earth and you know it. And you are walking in that authority and you are walking in your identity and you know God is doing big things through me because I'm surrendered and I'm humbling myself under him. And if I need to be taken out of this cleaning job, I'll be taken out of the cleaning job when he is ready. But I'm going to clean under the Lord. I've done it. I've cleaned houses. I worked as a caregiver for years and years and years and years. And I thought that it was interesting. Um, you know, I, I really am, the, when I said the 16th or 18th, that this metamorphosis thing is going to end. And God is moving us. There's open doors. At church today, I had an apostle show me four open doors that I'm going to be walking through. Major things that I have been praying for. Um, that I'm going to be walking through these four open doors this year, by the end of the year. And as I got to each door, he had somebody line up. Um four people line up and as I got to that person the person he'd say and this door is going to bow to you it's going to open and like the bowing and it was like a powerful thing that happened and God said the 18th my, my so I sowed into that man's life I'm like oh yes this is for me and I'm telling you it's not just for me if you have been going through some stuff it really is a season of open doors that, and if you have went through the process t today this weekend there is a shift there's a shift, and if you haven't quite gotten a hold of it, I'm going to pray for you guys at the end because I feel like God is moving us. The, pe the people who that God has sent to me to minister to, that there is, they're, they're in alignment and that God's doing very similar things as I'm prophesying over their lives and they're receiving that word for themselves. What he's doing for me, you can receive it for yourself too. You can receive it even if you haven't been through the exact same thing. You can hear it and say, that's for me too, and I'm going to receive this. So, in talking about humility, let's read Paul's um, some verses. Okay, Paul, he knew the law. <laughs> you know, he understood all the Old Testament, and he had every reason to feel proud of himself. 
But this is what he's saying. Imitate Christ's humility. Okay? Um, this is Philippians 2, starting in verse 5. In your relationship with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus. Okay, I'm going to stop here and share one of the, the verses the Lord gave me. Because this is for somebody. Because he's been he had me add this story of my battle. So as I'm praying and asking, Lord... Because the witchcraft was strong. I mean, I had... And it was happening at the same time through two different people that were bombarding me using scripture and saying, you know, talking about God. And I'm like, this is... There's something major going on here, Dave. And I need to know for sure that it's not something God's trying to teach me. Because I wanted to make sure that it wasn't something I was missing. It wasn't somewhere I was messing up. And it wasn't. I'm just going to be honest. It was not. It really wasn't. It was God trying to help me into that next level of really being able to go through the spiritual warfare and discerning of the spirits and, and, and coming through that warfare. But one of the things that I, when I was meditating, I said, Lord, I need scripture. He gave me two scriptures. And, and one of the one was where uh, the man came to God and said, or came to Jesus rather and said, you know, Lord, you know, I want to follow you. And he said, come follow me. And he said, well, let me go bury my dad first. And Jesus said to him, let the dead bury their own dead, but you follow me. Now, that seems harsh. That seems hard. That seems like a hard thing to say to somebody. But some people, you cannot stay behind. You, you've got to go forward. And if they're going to carry their dead things, if they're going to put their dead things before the Lord, you've got to move on and, and, and move on without them. And Jesus did it. He told people hard things and you got to deal with this issue. I can't, I'm not going to stay behind here and wait for you to bury your dad. You have priority issues and you are not putting me first and you can't follow me if you're not following me and I'm going this way. So if you're going that way, you're not with me. So God had given me that uh, where it, he, he takes your human sympathies and he puts them in their place. I'm sorry. I, I don't care if it's your mother, it's your son. If they're keeping you from following Jesus, you've got to stop that. It is an ungodly, unhealthy tie that has to be broken. And there might be manipulation, and it's a pattern, and it's been going on for a while. You're not going to move forward from the pit to the palace. This isn't even one of my points, but I'm telling you, it holds people back more than anything. And I keep, I keep bringing it up because it's such a big thing. And the other one, I believe, it was... Uh, the person with the money where he told him to go sell everything and follow him. So just keep that in mind. Being humble, being a peacemaker, live in harmony with each other. And, and all of these things does not mean you don't confront, doesn't mean you don't, you know, say what needs to be said as a minister. I had to cut a friend off last week. It's a horrible situation. I confronted her about the sexual sin her and her minister boyfriend were living in. And I said, you can't do that. That's not okay. Y'all need to repent. Y'all need to step down from ministry. I can't be friends with you anymore. This has been going on. Like, you know, you can't do this anymore. And uh, she, you know, listen, you are going to lose people as you go from the pit to the palace. You are going to lose people, and they might look like they're prospering in their way, but you have to walk in excellence, and you have to walk and obedience and you have to speak the truth and you have to you have to put God first to where people just begin to believe it's all about God it's all about Jesus he loves people he knows how to love them well and loving them well means speaking the truth and loving them well means following the word and the word says if if they call themselves a believer and they are living in sexual sin you can't keep hanging out with them you've got to put them out of your fellowship so that the enemy can um, do what needs to be done now that their soul might be saved. You are giving them over to their own evil desires in the hopes that they can come to repentance. And when we keep them in fellowship, and when we keep fellowshipping with them, and just say, "Well, they had a hard childhood," and this, and, you know, you you gotta you gotta follow what the Word of God says about those kind of situations. <clears throat> now God's gracious, and He deals with new believers. You know, you still have to tell them, though. You know, if God's telling you to tell them, and you got to walk away. If God says walk away. The, the demands that Christ has on us, if we truly want everything he has for us, if we truly want to walk in abundance, 
if we truly want to walk in authority, if we want to be released into influence, if we want to go and make disciples, we got to understand his, uh, it's, his yoke is easy and his burden is light. His yoke is easy and his burden is light. I'm not saying it's hard to do. Maybe it's hard on your flesh, but by God's grace, you can do anything. You know, what we can't do on our own. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. And he's the one who infuses that inner strength in us to do these things and to put everything in its proper order and proper place to where God is the one that we're serving. He's the one who's meeting our needs. He's the one who we're trusting to work it all out and to bring justice. And if we have to, you know, leave this relationship or that relationship or lose this supporter or that supporter, we know that God is the one. God is the one who is meeting our needs. He's the one who is going to bring us among uh, he's going to put us before rulers. He's going to open doors for us that no man can shut. And you might have to walk in this a long time. You know, even if you've been already in that place of rulership, already in your promised land, this does not mean that you will never get thrown back into a pit by jealous people or by the enemy. Because look at, look at Daniel. He was already in a position of leadership. Nebuchadnezzar had put him in a position of leadership and, and the other wise men were jealous of him. And he said, they said, we're not going to be able to get anything over on him unless we make it about his God. So he they talked the king into making a law that nobody could bow to anybody but, but him because they knew that Daniel wasn't going to compromise worshiping God. And he they had the king sign an edict, that's how you pronounce it, <laughs> saying anybody who did this was going to go into the lion's den. Of course, Daniel... He bowed and worshipped his God. He got thrown in the lion's den. And God shut the mouths of the lions. We cannot walk by fear of man. We cannot walk by fear of man. We can't walk by fear of lack. We can't walk by fear of rejection. You're going to go through rejection test. Test of do you trust God to meet your needs? Are you going to compromise? Are you going to steal? Are you going to cheat? When nobody's looking. Like, I really believe Joseph could have gotten a gotten by with the sexual morality with uh, Potiphar's wife in the natural but he would have never ever been elevated and it looks a lot of times like when you're doing the right thing I'll just go ahead and say I've lost two really generous partners that were also friends of mine by speaking the truth in love trying to help them you know and you will lose people you will lose people. You'll have people that will use you to get ahead when they've gotten somewhere. They'll, they'll cut you loose. They'll get your contacts. They'll cut you loose. They, you know, if we start looking at the people around us for our stability, it's a shaky thing. It is a shaky thing. But when we know that God is our stability, we can look at the people around us without becoming like so bitter and disillusioned by the whole mess and say, you know, God, well, if he can do it for me, he can do it for anybody. You know, these people might have to go through some stuff, but I'm trusting God. I'm believing God. You pray for them. You release them. You know, God's going to do work. I'm trusting God's going to do work. He can work through other people. It doesn't just have to be me. Jesus, Jesus. So, Paul. In your relationship with one another, have the same mindset as Jesus Christ, who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore, because he did this, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my dear friends, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but much more in my absence, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill his good purpose. 
Do everything without grumbling or arguing so that you may become blameless and pure, children of God without fault in a warped and crooked generation. Then you will shine among them like stars in the sky as you hold firmly to the word of life. And then I will be able to boast on the day of Christ that I did not run or labor in vain. But even as I'm being poured out like a drink offering on the sacrifice and service coming from your faith, I'm glad and rejoice with all of you. So you too should be glad and rejoice with me. You know, I love this because Paul, he voices what many people and leadership already know. What you're going through, like I was saying before with your kids, what you allow God to do in you, it's going to pour and trickle over onto the people that are following you, your children. Or the people that are being discipled by you. We're not just going through the things that we go through to get to a palace to sit around, you know, eating bonbons and, and not having to do any work anymore. Like God's bringing us up. He's bringing us up out of the pit. He's elevating us. He's positioning us so that everything that we went through, everything that we have to go through to get to that place, all the brokenness, all the pain, all the suffering, all the warfare, all of that stuff, you are able to um, pass it on to other people that come behind you. You are able to pass it on to other people that come behind you. I know for myself, there are ministry, and what I've been doing even while I'm going through this warfare is sitting up under some ministries because, you know, when you're in ministry, you're studying and you're working, you're writing and you're doing the, all the stuff that you do. And so when I'm in warfare, I like to sit up under my men, my mentors and listen and listen, 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 soak, 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 soak. It doesn't matter if it's something I've heard that I know. I sit there underneath that anointing and soak and fill up. And, and, and I receive from them and I sow financially. And I sow financially into those people. And it is... Fills me back up, empowers me. I go forward in that fullness that the Lord has used through the... We should all have mentors. We should also have people that we're pouring into. That's what I do to get past the stuff. Jesus, Jesus. So, so mostly, I really just... Um, <sighs> Bible-based humility does not mean being unaware of your gifts and calling. I really, I really, really feel like when we have humility and we understand what we're called to, we understand what our gifts are, we can take criticism, whether it's from a good place or deserved or undeserved, we can take that criticism and it not crush us. The Lord is raising up a strong, powerful people. I mean, I was talking to my son about this. He's a ballet dancer. He said that the society has gotten what they call snowflakes. You know, offended by this, offended by that, and that offends me. This offends me. Fin, 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 fin. And I can't do this, and, and I shouldn't have to go through this. And it's like this wave of offense, and it said this is going to happen. And the word says that there's many that will be offended and be giving offense. The same people that are offended often are the ones giving off offense. But my son's a ballet, a professional ballet dancer. And it is a very, very, very disciplined, uh, hard career. And it's been notorious, that, I mean, like, holding lighters under people's legs to get them to hold it up. Like, locking them with sticks, calling them names, to, you know, telling these pretty little girls if they gain an ounce, they're fat and they need to lose weight. I mean, hard some training companies, depending on where they're training, are difficult. I mean, the people are under so much stress, they cry. Like, Forrest has been through training where, like, the girls are crying every day, every day, every day. And it's just so strenuous, and it's so hard. But nobody ever thinks, I mean, the positions are few, and the training is so rigorous. And those who don't go, not saying that it's right to be underneath that kind of hardness from uh, an employer... But he was saying, well, even when in ballet training, like, they have to touch you. They, they have to jerk your leg up. And, like, the American culture and uh, some of the stuff that's going on in ballet companies, they're, like, more and more and more they're having to uh, tone it way, way down. But it's actually making some of the dancers not as 
Uh, discipline. And I'm not saying that it's good to be under abuse or anything like that, but even in, in the training that's just hard, where they, they push you and 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 push you so you can push your body. You know, these are the things that I'm saying that's not like, it's not good to be under, but at the same time, some of the things that we have to go through are super hard. I worked for a couple of families. When I say they were particular, extremely particular. Nobody could work for them and they would send me there and I just submitted to the authority. And if they told me to do it this way and I did it exactly the way they told me to do it for three weeks and that's how they told me to do it. And then they said, this is not how I want it done. This is not how I told you to do it. This is how I told you to do it. And if it wasn't how they had told me three weeks that I had been doing it, they didn't have a problem. I'd say, okay, show me how you want it done. I apologize. I'll do it the way you want me to. And I just did it. And I didn't sit around and hate the person you guys we gotta not be such pansies about hard difficult people in our lives i'm preaching to myself too or you know just some of the things that we have to go through we gotta think about what jesus went through and open not his mouth they spit on him <laughs> they beat him Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. <clears throat> I don't think that we're doing any favors as ministers of the gospel to say that it is... Ne I actually, I think it's interesting because there is a, a prophet that I used to follow that through a series of things I don't follow this person anymore and don't get their emails. And I got one of their emails today from a email address that I know I've never set, set up with them. And I read that prophetic word and God's just now speaking to me why. I was like, maybe he's saying something I need to hear today. And I read it and I was like, maybe I need to believe this. <laughs> and now I'm seeing why God had that come through. It wasn't because I needed to believe it. It's because it is false prophecy when somebody tells you the Lord never wants you to have to go through anything hard. And if he said in this email, anybody who teaches or preaches that you're going to have to, that the Lord wants you to go through anything hard and anything bad to happen. Now, I am not saying, okay, let's just look at the Old Testament. When uh, Saul, it says as an evil spirit from the Lord came upon Saul. God is sovereign. God is sovereign. And, and for an immature Christian who doesn't understand that God is love and doesn't really understand the cross, this is a hard concept even for mature Christians. That in God's sovereignty, he allows painful things to happen. And he is still good. And he is still working good. I do not believe that God allows... I've heard this prophet say before... When somebody preaches that God allows certain bad things to happen so that something good can come out of it, that is not from the Lord. It is from the Lord. It's in the Word of God over and over and over again. You've got to read it for yourself before you just listen to people who, who prophesy lies. And it sounds good right then and there, but then when you are actually in the middle of a battle and you know you've been following God and here you are... And you are listening to God to the best of your ability, yet here you are. That word that made you feel good when you first heard it, that just says, you know, God is Santa Claus, it's not helpful. We got to grow beyond that and say, God is good. He is working good. And through all of these things, he's working good. But as long as we are living in this fallen world, we have got to understand that there is stuff we got to go through with people. There are demons that we have to fight. They're still loose in the world. Yes, they've been conquered on the cross, but they're not completely tied up and thrown in the pit yet. So we have to walk in our authority. And if we can't ever, ever have to go through anything without questioning the goodness of God, and if we have to have people constantly propping us up and telling us how great we are and getting our immediate reward every little time we do something, you aren't going to get to that place where you actually begin to walk in that place of fullness where 
more and 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 more God is able to release things and and, and use you and you're, and you're walking in that authority because you've learned obedience and you've learned humility through the things that you've suffered. <clears throat> I hope this is making sense. I'm not trying to tell you to, to believe for bad things to happen. And God is good and he is doing good things and he's wonderful. And I can say that I've been through this and there's still things that I'm going to be going through. And I have not arrived there, but in many, many, many ways I have seen how the goodness of God shines through even in those hard places and how our, our becoming more like Christ and our Christ likeness comes through the things that we suffer and that we go through. It deepens you. And the higher the call on your life, the more you're asking God through for, then you have to be prepared to be prepared. You have to understand you got to go through some preparation and it's not always a bed of roses on the outside because God's trying to get us where these outside things don't move us that we are learned to rise above things you never can fly you never learn to really come up in that place of faith and total trust in the goodness and the sovereignty and the wonderful plan that God has for you if you're not having to rise above some of the things that you see with your eyes that aren't lining up with what you know to be true there is there's a time and there's a space where God begins to move and open doors and open doors and open doors and you will still have things you got to go through but on the pit of the palace you guys this week let's look they just have an exercise in humility i find it really when i'm mindful of this i find a lot of joy and just thinking of all the ways you can submit in traffic let people in front of you in line and i'm not saying let people walk over you you know just let somebody else think that they're right even if they're not right <laughs> You know, just practice humility, practice keeping peace, practice walking in that meekness that the Lord says is uh, blessed, that's going to bring the blessings into our lives. <clears throat> I mean, Jesus, David, Joseph, and Daniel all rule and reign. They all came into a place of great prosperity where they they had so much to give out they had so many people coming to them that they were meeting their needs they had so much authority and so much influence and and they're in the scriptures to show us you know this is the word of god to show us the way to teach us what we got to go through if we want to have what they have the, the word says if we suffer with him we will also rule and reign with him. So I'm going to pray a minute over this, uh, the, um, just to wrap up. If you guys have been coming under some uh, spiritual demonic attacks, I really believe that today is the day that the Lord has said ahead of time that that, that is to end. That we are now coming into a season. I'll prophesy about this another time. Maybe later on this week, I'll prophesy about what, what you can be looking forward to for this month if you've been going through some stuff and you've been following and obeying the Lord. <clears throat> Jesus, I pray in the name of Jesus that confusion lift in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, that confusion has to go in Jesus' name. I speak and declare clarity in your mind you have the mind of Christ I pray a release in the name of Jesus that you be released from the residual of the of the past season that you you fully accept this new place in the Lord where you are stronger in the Lord and in his mighty power where you know him deeper where you trust him greater and where you are more full of faith for the release of the things that you need to move forward he has positioned an open door. He has positioned an open door, and it's time to walk through it. Prophetically, it is time to walk through it. If you have been allowing the Lord to prepare you, the door is open. Walk through the door. Walk into that next level of influence. Walk into that next level of um, 
abundance in the spirit where you are able to draw on that joy and that peace and that grace that the Lord has for you in this place that he's taken you to where he's using you. He wants to use you in a mighty, mighty way in this earth to spread the good news of the kingdom of God. The enemy is under your feet. The thing that was plaguing you has to cease and desist. I thank you, God, that the completion of what you have been working on in our lives, that it is completed, that there is a level of metamorphosis, that the, the detours have to, the detours are, are stopping, that God is, is, is putting you back on that path and you will quickly walk through that open door that is before you without hesitation, without fear, in the strength and power of the Lord, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. didn't work out the last time you tried go again go again go again there was there was some things that the Lord needed to do in you there's some things that needed to be done and 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 there are things that have been completed and you need to try again you need to try again you need to go again the enemy might have come and stolen some things but the God is restoring those things God is restoring those things that door that had been closed to you before is open in the name of Jesus, try again. Be free from fear in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. 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 And 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 you prophetic people that have had uh, attacks from Jezebel, control, manipulation, confusion, mind fog heaviness Lord God I pray you send mighty warring angels to contend with those that contend with your people mighty warring angels right now on the left and the right and on the front and on the back Lord make the path straight God mow down the adversary contend with those that contend with that have contended with us Lord God I thank you Lord that you are completing that you have completed the work that you have promised us to complete in this past season and you are moving us forward in Christ you are moving us forward in positioning us to receive in Jesus name those of you that have been following the Lord that have been walking with him that have been believing God that have been believing God for that breakthrough 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 I, I feel like for some of you that that offshoot of me testifying was what you needed to hear and you just need to maybe if, if you're not fully sure, you need to get alone with the Lord and say, I'm not getting up to you clarify with certainty the path, the step, the door, because the door is open and you got to walk through it, okay? you got to walk through it. It is open before you. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, Lord, we just cut off. We crash, smash, and destroy every enemy plan that would try to hinder us from the forward momentum that you have in, in August and through September as we as we finish out this Jewish New Year, Lord. Lord, I thank you, God, that our times are in your hands, that you are finishing up things, that you have finished up things, and that you are, are beginning to move us into that next phase, Lord God, and into that next place, God, and, and, and that you are provisioning above and beyond, above and beyond, Lord, that the, the, the seeds of the harvest are coming forth in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Okay. I love you guys. Share this. If you, any of you are in the Orlando area, August 31st, um, come at, to the Hidden Messages workshop. There's tickets on my Eventbrite, Hidden Messages Eventbrite on my Facebook page. Uh, I think you can link it on my website, itinerary. Also, Saturday, I'm going to be in Houston, Texas. I really think I, they can make room for another three people at that Hidden Messages workshop. It's going to be awesome. Houston, Texas, if you are in the area or you want to 
fly out. I had people fly out in the other places from other areas. Come on, it's gonna be amazing, it's gonna be powerful. And there's just, good, it's a workshop, so it's a very interactive, personal. I'm gonna do a lot of teaching, but we're also gonna be doing talking and I'll interpret some dreams and prophesy over some people and there'll be some prophetic exercises that we're doing. And then absolutely mark your calendar for October 19th and 20th, Herndon, Virginia, Plans, Purposes and Pursuits. It's a prophetic conference. It's me, Candace Smithman, Prophet Candace Smithman, uh, Prophetess Dawn Hill, Prophetess Carol Simpson, powerful, powerful women of God. Saturday night, we're having a banquet. Sunday, uh, just, th there's four of us, and we're just going to be filling you guys up. So much, so much prayers going into this, and, and we'd love to have you. So you can also find that on my website or event page on my Facebook I'm still offering one-on-one -on -one counseling. You can go to my website, emilyroselewis.org, just to learn more about what's going on. Launching a school this fall, super excited about that. And I'm gonna be doing the Hidden Messages uh, workshop. It's being broken up into several classes. So that's gonna be available online if you can't make one of the workshops. But I'm waiting until I complete the tour and really hash out how I want to uh, it's, it's, it's going to be even more intense and extensive than what I can do in a one-day workshop. But I, I'm getting a lot of feedback and it's just kind of, it's a blossoming. The whole uh, hidden messages, dreams, visions, and mysteries. And I, I love this. I love this is what God is having me start the school with. And I'm, I'm being commissioned to do this by Jesus. He, he came to me and told me to do this. So I'm believing that there will be great fruit and... Um, and, and, and doing what he's asked me to do in people's lives because we need to be able to hear from God personally and for ourselves and he is speaking through through everything 